Amen. To God give all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Why we are here today to come together to edify one and lift one another up, but to also worship God and praise Him in spirit and in truth. It's so great to see everybody here with us. See some faces we haven't seen in a little bit, and we have some visiting us. Good to see the Pius family with us uh, today, and we pray for their safe trip home when they go back home. It's always wonderful to see everybody, and like Wayne says, we've got more back, and as we fill up the building and we lift our voices when we sing hymns, it just, it sounds so good, doesn't it? And it's just so edifying to see everybody, and you know, it's my favorite day. It's always my favorite day to come together on the Lord's Day, but also extra special because we get to eat today, all that wonderful food and meet and fellowship. So um, if you're here with us uh, visiting, do not leave. Stay with us today and um, enjoy the wonderful meals that uh, has been prepared for, for us today. You know, mothers are uh, very special, very wonderful. My, mo my, my mom was very special. I sure miss her. Um, I, I, you know, my wife is a wonderful mother. I see her with my daughters, and it never ends, right? When they get out of the house, you're still a mother. You still are there for them. You still love them. You still encourage them. My, my daughter, Cheyenne, she's a wonderful, special mother to my granddaughter, Charlie, and my, ba uh, and my grandson or granddaughter coming, and so we're excited about that. But I look around this room and I see so many uh, wonderful mothers here this, this Lord's Day. You know, I love what Roper wrote in, in the book that we're studying, in the Truth For Today book on the life of Christ. Uh, and he, he said this, it's about the Peanuts comic uh, strip. And, you know, um, it brought me back to my childhood. We used to love watching that when it was on TV. And my dad loved the Peanuts. He loved uh, Snoopy. He got a kick out of out of Snoopy, but he says this in this book that, that Charlie Brown said, everyone needs someone to love them and trust them, care for them, support them, laugh and cry with them. And then Lucy responded, well, that's a lot of people. And then Snoopy chimed in, our one wonderful mother. Amen to that. Amen. Wonderful mothers are a blessing from God. And that's just what they do with their children. They, they care for them. They're there for them. And, and Snoopy had it right when you think of that comment. Now, I, although today I know is not Mother's Day, and, but we could look at our special mothers around this room and we could think about every day is Mother's Day because what mothers mean to God, what they mean to us, what the mothers mean to this congregation here at Ripon. So today we're going to look at uh, Mary, Jesus' wonderful uh, mother, uh, special mother that he had. And when we think of Mary, we think about there is two extremes when it comes to Mary. And both of these extremes are wrong. First of all, on one end of the extreme, you have people who actually worship Mary as if she were God. You know, they say that she is the mother of God, so she deserves our uh, worship. But Mary is not God of heaven, nor does she uh, do we pray to Mary. Uh, we do not pray for, uh, to her for our sins. We only pray to God uh, for those things. On the other end of the stream, then there's people who do not give Mary any uh, credit at all. They, they deny Mary. They, they don't even pay any attention uh, to her. They neglect her altogether. You know, we have heard sermons. You might have heard sermons of Naomi, or you might have heard uh, Martha, or Priscilla, um, Phoebe, or one of the uh, other women, uh, mothers of the Bible. You may have heard a lot on them, maybe in sermon illustrations, uh, but you've never really hear much about Mary. I, I've been in the church a long time, and I've never heard a sermon uh, preached on Mary, his mother. You may have, I have not. But this morning, because of who she was, Mary does deserve her due. Of course, Mary is not divine, um, uh, but she was one remarkable woman, and she's one remarkable mother in Jesus, in his life, in his birth, and what he, uh, she meant to him and all his disciples around him. So for the next 20 or so minutes, we're going to concentrate on Mary and how Mary was viewed 
um, how she was seen as worthy by all, how she shared her godly heart with all of those who are around her. Now, before we get to that, we're going to look at some bi biblical historical facts concerning Mary, just a few, not, not a lot. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But first of all, uh, we, we see that Mary was chosen to be the mother of the Messiah. We pretty much all know that, don't we? And she was engaged to uh, uh, Joseph. And the Bible tells us, like Jason mentioned in his class this morning, I like those words too. She did not know him. She was a virgin. And then she became pregnant. Luke chapter 1 and verse 31 says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Now, hearing this, Mary did not doubt God's power like Zacharias did. She just did not understand how she could have a baby in her womb. She said this in verse 34, How can this be since I am a virgin? That's the difference. Is she just didn't understand that. When we look at Zacharias, when, when he doubted Elizabeth going to be pregnant, when she, was, she couldn't have a child, he doubted God's power. We see this. This was the first miracle that had to do with Jesus recorded here in the New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 35 says, The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. We looked at Jesus last week. We looked at Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, the Savior. Jehovah saves. 31 through 33 states this. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. That kingdom. Not a physical kingdom that we know. That Jesus came here to establish a spiritual kingdom. That kingdom is the body of Christ. That kingdom is the church. The church of Christ. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 and 19. And we see Mary here. Mary gives birth to the Son of God. The one who's going to come here and establish this beautiful, wonderful, spiritual kingdom. When Jesus ascended to heaven to sit on God's right hand on the throne, this was the beginning of his reign. His reign over his kingdom. And he sat on that spiritual throne of David. Like we could read in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 22, verse 25 through 36. The angel's words here anticipated this happening. Now the Lord gave Mary a sign. Mary was not looking for a sign, but the Lord gave her a sign. And Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, was in her old age and she was barren. She could not have children. But now, six months with a baby, she was pregnant with a baby. Luke chapter 1, verse 36. And that baby was John the Baptizer. And her husband, Zacharias, uh, earlier uh, two vi angels visited him. We, the Bible tells us here that the, Gabriel, uh, and the angel Gabriel visited him. And the, the other angel probably was also Michael because the Bible tells us the two names of the angels that the Bible uh, mentions were Gabriel and were Michael. So we know Gabriel was one of those angels that went to him, told Zacharias that she was going to have a son to name him John the Baptizer. And he was going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. Luke chapter 1, verse 13 through 17. And this was prophesied in Malachi. And Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 talks about this. And Zacharias could not understand. Not that he just didn't understand it. He doubted the power of God like Jason talked about in class today. And that was a very, very big mistake. Because his doubt of God's power, that unbelief caused him to not be able to speak anymore. And, and uh, verses 18 through 
20. Elizabeth soon was found with child, just like the angel said, and Zacharias could see that he made a mistake. You know, when you think about it, this is a great lesson for us today. There's always going to be negative consequences if we doubt God, isn't there? We need to realize that nothing is impossible with God. In fact, every word is not impossible to God. Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. Do we believe that? When we face things in life that seem impossible, at least in our eyes, do we doubt it? Do we doubt God's power? Do we doubt what God says he's going to do? And think, no way. Nothing is impossible to God. His power, he can do anything that he wills. The question is, is why was Mary chosen to give birth to Jesus? Now before we go there, let's consider four reasons why the virgin birth is vital to our faith. Jason mentioned two from the book. I'm going to mention those, and I'm going to mention the other two also. First of all, the virgin birth is what God chose it to be. He chose that for a reason, and it is recorded in the New Testament. Now, what happens when we deny that, when we deny something that's recorded? Scripture, inspired Scripture that's recorded, and we deny that, like Zacharias' doubt. When we do that, we deny God. We say, I do not believe in the inspiration of the Holy Scriptures when we deny what God says is going to be done. I know nobody here denies the virgin birth. But if you, in your mind, if you are kind of having trouble with that, we have trouble with certain things in the Bible. And that's okay to kind of go, like, like Mary, like, I just don't understand that. But we don't deny God. We do not deny his power. Second, the virgin birth was essential in the incarnation of Christ. Without it, we would not have God in the flesh, would we? To deny the virgin birth is to deny the essential deity of Christ. Third, since the virgin birth is tied with Jesus being God, to deny it is to deny the effectiveness of Christ's death. And Jason mentioned that, that this morning from the book. A mortal man's death could not atone for all the deaths of all other mortal men. Only God could do that. Only God's death could do that. And fourth, the virgin birth was the first recorded miracle in Jesus' life. And think about this. How could we grasp any other miracle in the Bible if we cannot accept that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary? If we deny the virgin birth, that miraculous birth, we're going to deny so many other miracles in the Bible, in the New Testament, the resurrection. How could a man, how could anybody die? How could anybody die and be buried and then come back to life three days later? We have to accept what God hath said, what he's done, his power. We cannot deny God and be right with him. To deny scriptures, to deny the power of God. I like how Roper quotes John Franklin Carter here. He, in his Layman's Harmony of the Gospels, he says, Unbelief is both the root and the fruit of denying the virgin birth. See, Mary was chosen by God to give birth to Jesus, to give birth to the Messiah. And it needed to be done on and how God wants it done. In God's way. Okay, so now let's look at why. Why was Mary the chosen mother of the Messiah? You know, this could be a two part sermon easily of all the all the reasons why, all those fine qualities that Mary had and why God chose her. Well, we don't have time for that. We're just going to look at um, just a few today. Elizabeth told Mary in, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 42 that she was the most blessed among all the women. Then later on in that, in verse uh, 48, verse 40 says, says all generations are going to see Mary in this way. 
But Mary, we don't forget, Mary was human. Mary was just a woman. She was imperfect. Mary sinned just like we sinned. We can't put Mary on the same level as God. We can't put her on the same importance of God. Because just because she is the mother of God. She's a human. She falls short also. But God chose her for his reasons. Consider these wonderful and honorable qualities that Mary possessed. First of all, Mary was a godly woman. And in this, Mary had a, a pure heart, Luke chapter 1 and verse 30. It says there, an angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. See, one does not find favor with God if they're not a good person, if they do not have a good heart. And Mary had that good, that pure heart. Mary chose to be involved. She, she believed in, in what the angel told her. She knew that God had the power, that God was going to make that happen. And she also knew the scriptures. When we get later on in, in Luke, we, verses 46 through 55, that she sings a, a poetic hymn to God. And she starts out saying in, in verse 46, My soul exalts the Lord. Look at verses 46 through 49. She shows her gratefulness to God. She praises God and all that God has done for her. Do we do that? Do you praise God every day for what he's done for you? When you think about your blessings, if you sat down and wrote out all your blessings, oh, you'll, you'll sing praises to God and, and you'd be how, very grateful for what he's done for you. In verses 50 through 53, she praises God for what he does for the world, what he does for everybody else, how God goes out there and how he helped the poor and he helped the hungry, he helped the helpless and he helped the hopeless. She praises God for what he has done for Israel and then she praises him for always keeping his promises in verse 54 and verse 55. Yeah, Mary was a godly woman. Mary loved God. She praised God. She gave thanks to Him. She lived how God wanted her to live. What an example she is to you and I. This is what we need to do. We need to sing our praises to Him every day. Thank Him every day. Don't let a day go by without doing it. Look at your life. Look at what God has blessed you with. Look around. Look at the food we get to eat. Look at the houses we get to live in. The cars we get to drive. We get to come together. Look at the love we have. Look at our children, our family. The list goes on and on. Give thanks to God. Praise Him for what He's done for you and I. Secondly, Mary was a humble servant of God. And there are many reasons that we, we can name today. I mean, we could go through today why God chose Mary. I'm going to leave some out. But I think this is one of the biggest reasons, the ones we just talked about. You've got to be godly. If you're not godly, it's going to be hard to do any of these other things. But number two, she had a humble heart. Think about that and how humble she was to God. Verse 38, the first part of verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord. That Greek word, the doulos, means bond slave. But the feminine form of this word, or slave, you think about this word, and you think about at the time, female slaves were, were considered the worst. Of all, I mean, women weren't really re held in high regards. They should have been. And then you think about women slaves. They were considered the lowliest. They're often despised and they're mistreated as people, as slaves. But God holds high regard to those who want to be his doulos. Those who want to be his bondservant. Those who want to serve him. Mary was a faithful servant of God. Mary wanted to, 
serve him. She wanted to be a worker for him. She wanted to do the will of God. So that takes us to number three. Mary was submissive to God's will. See, Mary had a pondering heart. Luke chapter 2, verse 19 through 51. It also said that it says that here in our text that she pondered. She was a thinking woman. She had that mind. She thought about things. She pondered over them. Second part of verse 38 says, May it be done according to your will. See, according to your word. Not mine, not hers. Do not question God. She she didn't question him. He didn't protest the fact where she was she was gonna have a baby and she was a virgin and she she was just betrothed to Joseph. And a lot of heartache is going to come with that. And she did not question that. Consider the implications here, especially during this time. Mary was put in a very dangerous situation of the time. She was young. She was not married. She was betrothed to Joseph. Yeah, and she was a virgin. Think about what Joseph's going to think. Joseph's going to think that she cheated on him. And they're in a town at this time before they left. They're in Nazareth before Jesus was born. Nazareth wasn't regarded as a, a great place to live by others. Imagine the people. Imagine the gossip. Imagine the stares. Imagine the judgmental stares and comments that when she walked by others. And of course, under the law. The penalty for a woman who was engaged and committed fornication, like Jason said, was death. Was being stoned to death. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 23 through 24 and also in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10. Do you think that Mary, when she was told that she was going to have the Holy Spirit put a baby in her womb, do you think she knew of the danger? Yes, she knew of the danger. She knew what she was going to face. But she said to the angel, if God wants it to be that way, so be it. Shouldn't that be our thinking too? If it's God's will, shouldn't we just say, okay, Lord. I may not agree with it. I may not understand it. And it really doesn't matter if we do or not. The old saying goes, I think it was um, Marshall Keeble. And he was a great preacher. I couldn't even come close to his level. And Marshall Keeble said, God said it. That settles it. Or I believe it. And that settles it. But the fact is, it doesn't matter if we believe it or not. If God says it, that settles it, doesn't it? That's his word that we are to grasp. We are, we are to say, Lord, if it's your will, then I'm going to be okay with it. I'm going to say, you have your reasons, God. And God's will is always right. So I encourage you and I encourage myself is to embrace it. Even when it does not seem fair, it doesn't seem right, we don't understand it. The will of God is always right, and God always has a good plan for you and I. Fourth, Mary was brave and she was courageous. After 40 days after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph took the baby to the temple in Jerusalem. And Leviticus chapter 12 tells us of that purification and the circumcision of newborn babies and what they had to go through. So Simeon takes baby Jesus and he takes him in his arms and he explains to Mary that all this child was going to accomplish in his life. As recorded in Luke chapter 2. In verse 25 to 35. In Luke 2, 35, the first part of that verse says, And a sword 
will pierce even your own soul. See, Mary had a pierced heart. What does that mean that she had a pierced heart? Simeon's telling her that heartache is coming. Think about what that entailed of her going to be raising, giving birth to the Son of God, the Messiah. What was she going to face with baby Jesus? And then as baby Jesus gets older and goes through his ministry, think about uh, she, she had seven kids after Jesus. There's seven kids with Joseph, Jesus being the first, Jesus being the, the youngest, Mark chapter 6 and verse 3. So just, just by being a mother of that many kids alone, you, you think of all the work and, and all the stress that, that she had to go through of bearing children and dealing with everything you have to deal with. Now she's got the Son of God. The Son of God as her child. Think about that stress. I don't believe any mother has, has dealt with that kind of stress of what Mary had to deal with, having the Messiah as her son. Think about what he had to go through. Think about how he was hated and rejected by his own people. Think about the unfair trial, the kangaroo court that he was put on. Think about the spitting and the scourging and the crown of thorns and all these things that he had to do and she had to go through that and watch that. Think about the heartache, ladies. Think about your children. Now, if that was your child, you had to watch. I can't imagine. I can't imagine the heartache and the stress. But she endured it. She knew what it was going to mean to raise the Messiah, the Son of God. You cannot face what Mary faced without being brave and without being courageous. Going through the consequences First of all, being mocked and, and being um, all the things being said and all the judgment coming at her because she's pregnant. And then all she had to go through with Jesus being her son. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of blessings that come with that, too. Not sure. I, 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 I am sure that that was a very huge blessing for her. I mean, can you imagine Jesus also being right there, being one of his disciples even, walking with him? Listening to him. We're watching that show, The Chosen, and you know, and on that show, it's not gonna. They're gonna add stuff in there. They don't add anything biblical against the scriptures that I've seen. And as as they're going through the the and scripture, I'm I'm seeing the scripture, and I, I'm thinking about man, how awesome would that would have been to be with Jesus. Now, yeah, a lot of a lot of bad came with that too. But the reward, the reward. See, Mary knew. Mary knew that she had to have the Son of God, and she had to endure what she had to endure. Think about this. She was a poor woman. She was the, from a town that was despised. She was pregnant, being a virgin, and then she was going to be the mother of the Son of God. God chose Mary for that reason, because of who she was. Do you feel you cannot make a difference in this life? Think about Mary. What we just looked at, and you may be thinking some other things, how remarkable she was. But do you think that she really felt that way? Being a woman, a young woman being pregnant, not being married, having people mocking her. How do you think that she felt? How do you feel today? Do you feel that you're not important? Do you feel that God cannot use you? Well, He used Mary. He uses other characters in the Bible that we read about. How He chose His disciples. You think of every single disciple and who they were. Fishermen. Tax despised tax collector. When you, when you go through and you look at it, 
You are everything to God. Look at be like Mary. Have that character like Mary. And that, that really is, as we go off today, that really is our challenge. And I, I like to more call it, I say a challenge. This is a life of Christ challenge. But it really is a call for action today. You be like Mary. Do not doubt God. Sometimes we may feel like, I don't know about that. We may get down in life. Something may come our way. But all things are, po- are possible with Him. And what God wills is right. Embrace His will. Embrace it. Be like Mary. Live godly. Be like Mary. Be humble. Walk in humility. Jesus was the most humble. He sets that example for His disciples, for His mom, for each and every one of us. Be humble. Number five, submit to God. Give your life to God today. He's our master. Jesus is our master. He's Lord over all. And number six, stand brave and courageous like Mary. I think about if Mary could be brave and courageous, I could be brave and courageous. You could be brave and courageous. Why can we be brave and courageous? Why can we do these things? Because We talked about last week also. We have God with us. The lesson is yours this morning. I hope something that was said this morning about Mary, the mother of the Messiah, has pricked your heart. It makes you want to walk more like her, more like Jesus. The lesson is yours today. If you are subject to the invitation, we can pray together today. If you need to be immersed in water to have your sins washed away, Only the blood of Christ could wash away sin. That's the only thing. Come forward as we stand and we sing the invitation song.